Hello and welcome to the Sean Kelly uh, Movies uh, podcast and uh, this is my uh, second interview to uh, come out of the uh, 2022 Fantasia Film Festival and it'll probably be the uh, final interview to be released while the uh, festival is uh, still running. So this is uh, my interview with uh, director and co-writer Nico Vandenbrink who made the uh, folk for the folk horror film Moloch. So the uh, film had its uh, world premiere at Fantasia and is actually now available to stream on Shutter. So uh, let's uh, get uh, straight to my conversation with Nico Vandenberg. So where did the idea for Moloch come from? Hmm. Um, yeah. It, it, uh basically came from sort of two uh, things I was aware of in Dutch history and, uh, and folklore. First one being uh, uh, the Bach bodies. We have a history of uh, digging up uh, people who are like remarkably conserved. So that kind of speaks to the imagination. And uh, and the other thing is uh, a legend called, uh, uh, yeah, Witte Wieve. It's like white women or wise women, which is like women hiding in the fog disappearing because of these women or you know, taking your children. There's lots of legends. And um, uh, when I used to uh, bike to school, you would have these very th dense, low-hanging threads of fog, and we called them the bit of even. So uh, the original idea for Moloch came from sort of what, ha what happens if you combine these two elements, these people who've been dug up from the bog and these women hiding in the fog. So that was, I think, what sparked Moloch originally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so, so could you maybe talk a bit more about the bo bog bodies because that was quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, 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 these bog bodies are there uh, in many cases like thousands of years old and uh, um, uh, most of them you can see that they have been um, dumped into the body uh, um, in a ritualistic way and they've been uh, killed in a ritualistic way so for example the most famous one the girl of uh, Ida uh, uh, you can see there's a sort of woven cord around her neck so she's sort of been strangled uh, but in a ritualistic way so it's uh, yeah it also sparks the imagination like why are these people all brought to the bog and um, and what's also further interesting is that they don't seem to have resisted it they were a willing part of this uh, this sacrifice. So, uh, yeah, there's many secrets there to sort of explore. So I was actually doing a bit of um, research on Malak, and it, it's it's actually a, a real Canaanite god. So I was wondering yes. uh, how you took like the real folklore and added it to the film. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I guess uh, this was also uh, Dan who came came with uh, Moloch um, uh, in an, a very early draft. I think we were working on um, uh, an evil entity more resembling the devil and uh, someone had making a pact with the devil. Uh, I don't want to sort of give away too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, what did I say? No, uh, well, and so Dan... Uh, uh, how do I phrase this well? Um, uh, Dan found Moloch uh, uh, basically because uh, there is this theme of sacrifice and child sacrifice and uh, sacrifice of offspring within the film. And uh, as far as I, I can tell, Moloch wasn't a part of Dutch uh, culture, uh, but we uh, sort of woven it into the story because um, it fitted quite well. And I really liked it the title and mythology of Moloch as well. Yeah. Yeah, actually my research, I, I followed a Wikipedia page. <laughs> so it said that um, uh, Moloch actually started in the Hebrew, Hebrew Bible and the whole child sacrifice fit and came afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> what, what I understand is that um, I think that's the first time it's mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Molech or something. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that it was <laughs> um, it's probably the Greek as well who were sort of uh, 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 battling the uh, the Carthaginian people and the Phoenician mm -hmm. and uh, Canaanite people, and uh, uh, they came b back from their battles mm -hmm. saying, "Oh, we don't know how evil these people are. They sacrificed their children to this god, and they burned their <laughs> own children." So uh, you know, it's a question like how much of it is true and how much of it is is actual real or is is it maybe like very early propaganda mm -hmm. yeah well like a major theme in the film is like science versus superstition particularly the relationship between mm -hmm. uh beatrix and um jonas who's the archaeologist and the outsider in the film so yeah. how important for you it was to have the outside perspective of the events yeah it it's interesting because like with a folklore, typically you'll have an outsider coming into this sort of very closed off community and gradually discovering that something is very wrong and they have their own uh, uh, rituals and uh, festivities and um, uh, practices that they are unaware of and that becomes creepier and creepier and creepier. But because they don't know anything about it, they can sort of come at it from a discovering point of view. Um, but because our main character grew up in this community, we didn't have, you know, a, a real way to explain all of this. So, uh, uh, and that's where Jonas came in, who's an outsider, um, like from a practical point of view, so we could explain stuff to the viewer. Uh, and from like a thematic point of view, it's very por important for Beatrice because she is very sort of locked up in this, uh, in this society. And she made it out at some point, she made it to, New York and sort of made her own life for herself. And now she's back under her sort of mother's uh, uh, wings and protection, um, but it's also very suffocating. So uh, it's very interesting to her, of course, when there's someone who you know, has nothing to do with this community and maybe offers a way out or perspective on something else. Yeah. Well, I didn't find it interesting in the uh film the whole mythology building about the legend of Fikey and how they actually have the little pageant every year to yeah. tell the story and but 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 then um it got you got me thinking because I'm not going to spoil things but certain aspects of the climax as you start thinking that there might be something darker about these festivities they have every year so mm -hmm. I was wondering if there's like if you if it's um safe to ask if some of the townsfolk we meet over the course of the film have like some hidden agendas when talking to the characters. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're correct. Um, yeah, we have some hints uh, uh, scattered throughout the film and, 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 and you'll possibly be able to tell um, who has something to do with it and who doesn't. Um, but yeah, I don't want to spoil, <laughs> spoil yeah, no too spoilers. much. Yeah, no, there, there. Uh, so there are sometimes uh, people who are involved, and we had like a list in our heads, like uh, uh, who is involved to what extent, and uh, and it you know stretched also to uh, uh, people from different generations, and uh, someone having a son and a daughter, and so uh, there's this whole structure to <laughs> people who are involved. Yeah. So uh, I know that the uh, film has been acquired by Shudder. So um, is there any other um, distribution plans for Malak? No, I know the, the uh, film is sold to a number of uh, different countries. Um, I don't know specifically uh, like under what circumstances it will be distributed, if it's just DVD. In some cases, I think it's a theatrical release. Like I believe in Singapore, they're going to re release it theatrically, for example. Um, and it's an ongoing process, so uh, hopefully there will, it will be on the big screen in a number of countries. Be very mm -hmm. nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, Shutter of course has a huge uh, reach now in their dairy. Uh, they keep on expanding, so yeah, very excited for that. Okay, so that's my time, so thank you. <laughs> sure, well, thank you very much. The Movies Podcast is a production of SKRMovies.com. Episodes and show notes can be found at skmoviespodcast.ca or skmoviesstackcom And you can subscribe to us via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and where else podcasts are hosted. Support us by becoming a paid subscriber at skmoviesstackcom